Hi friends, Shin here. Since I moved to Florida and became a realtor, a lot of people have been asking me a lot of questions about Florida. I figured I would just make some videos with answers to these frequently asked questions for my friends and maybe future clients. And today I'm gonna talk about alligators. This seems to be a top concern of many people that are considering Florida. And if you stick to the end, I will talk about eating alligators. The most asked question I get is how often do alligators cause injury to people in Florida or how many alligators bites are there every year? The Florida Wildlife Commission actually keeps data on this going back to the 1940s. In the past, it has always been very rare because alligators were almost extinct up to the 1980s. Since the 1980s, due to an excellent conservation effort, the population of alligators has rebounded and at the same time, the population of Florida has exploded. So now there is more contact between these fascinating reptiles and humans in Florida. Even though the population of humans and alligators has increased, in the past decade, on average, every year, there are about 10 alligator bites, and very few of those are fatal. In a state of 23 million people, the occurrence of alligator bites is very rare. And if you are really worried about animal attacks, if you look up the statistics, actually there are more than 4.7 million dog bites per year in the United States. And more than 800,000 of those cases are very serious. So if you're really worried about animal attacks, alligators are nowhere near the top of the list for animal offenders. So another question people ask me is, how do I lessen my chances of a wild alligator encounter? And the number one thing is you really have to just use common sense. So alligators will leave you alone if you leave them alone because humans are really not part of their diet. So the FWC has some very good guidelines. Uh, basically, you shouldn't swim in water where you can't see very clearly if it's very muddy waters probably just don't go in there and definitely swim during the daytime at places that are designated for swimming. If you go to a lot of the freshwater sources in Florida, there are signs usually that says there is gator in these waters and that is where you need to be careful. Also, absolutely supervise your children when they're near water. That that should be done everywhere, not just in Florida. And also pets, definitely keep them away from these waters as well because alligators are very opportunistic eaters. Basically, they see something small, they might just wanna eat it. But generally, humans are not bothered unless you bother them. And harassing alligators intentionally is illegal in the state of Florida. So the next question I got before was, what happens if I do get attacked by an alligator? So this is after I tell people, you know, alligator attacks are very rare. They basically leave you alone. But there are rare instances where people do get attacked. So what should people do in that case? The FWC actually recommends that you fight the alligator because alligators do not like prey that fights back. They are fairly lazy and an adult alligator actually only eats about 15 pounds of meat per year so they don't actually eat that much they mostly just sit around but if an alligator does grab you but with a bite you should try to get them to loosen their grip and make sure that they don't drag you under the water and to make them loosen the grip one good way to do that is to jab your fingers inside their nostrils or eyes once you jab your fingers inside their nostrils they will have to breathe and they might open their mouth and let go and that is actually how a girl saved herself when she was attacked the next question actually one of my clients asked me this after they moved on to their property a lot of florida properties are next to natural lakes and rivers and also retention ponds retention ponds are actually in a lot of hoa neighborhoods so they asked me what happens if i do see a gator on my property so if you do see a gator on your property and it's over four feet long and you think that it poses a threat it is actually called a nuisance gator the fwc has a direct number you can call to relocate these nuisance gators that number is very easy to remember. It is 866-FWC-GATOR. So if the gator is less than four feet long and if 
if it is in your garage or swimming pool you can also call them to relocate it another thing people ask me a lot is where can i actually see gators if you do take any airboat tours onto swamps you'll probably see some gators that is all over florida in orlando or in the everglades in the everglades actually there is a place where you can swim with the alligators and that is an interesting experience I've not, never done before. And I don't know if uh, I will ever do it, but if you're an adrenaline junkie, that is definitely a place to go. Also in Orlando, there is a big theme park called Gatorland where you can learn about the gators. So here in St. John's County, what I re really recommend is the St. Augustine Alligator Farm and Zoological Park. Over there, you can see a lot of happy and fat alligators and you can see alligator feedings. A lot of interesting displays and also just a great collection of alligators and crocodiles from all over the world. It is really fun for all the kids and also adults and the St. John's County residents do get a discount on the tickets. So before I actually visited the park, I thought that it was an alligator farm where they raised alligators for meat and also leather products, but I was wrong. But People do eat alligator here. For the adventurous foodies out there, I'll tell you a bit about how you can go about eating gators and what they taste like. Alligator nuggets are a really popular appetizer here in our fish camps and seafood restaurants. They're usually made out of alligator tail meat and they're breaded basically like little chicken nuggets. They taste really good. It is a mix between chicken and fish I would say so it's a little more delicate than chicken but it is not as flaky as fish so it is a reptile so that it makes sense that it is something in between and also there are alligator ribs at some restaurants and they glaze them like any other kind of ribs I have not tried that yet I did go to a Chinese restaurant in St. Augustine and they had alligator cooked just like a Chinese style in pepper sauce and that was quite interesting as well. And if you want to cook your own alligator, uh, there's a place in Jacksonville called Tillman's. They sell all kinds of meat including alligator meat and we did try that one time. If you do want to catch your own alligator in the wild, you can do that here in Florida. You do have to apply for a license with the Florida Wildlife Commission. They only have a limited number of licenses every year. Once you catch an alligator, you can actually send it to a processing plant to get the meat out. I've never done that, but it sounds like an awesome adventure. I hope this was an informative video about an iconic animal in the Florida ecosystem. The bottom line is that alligators should be respected. As long as you leave them alone, they're not really a danger. You should just give them space and they won't bother you and actually they are quite delicious. I will be making more videos on living and investing and fishing in Florida. And if you have specific questions, please post them in the comments below or call or text me with my information in the description box. And if you're thinking of moving to Florida, please consider me to be one of your resources. Subscribe to this channel so you can continue to learn about Florida. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.